Hi, I'm Ron, and this is Chance. Eight years ago, I, my wife and I rescued him from a shelter. He's a timber wolf, and they were going to kill him. Um, I'm a musician. I've been on the road for many years, and the last eight years have been filled with agony and ecstasy. What I didn't know was that Chance was really rescuing me. This is our story. It's our second chance. And I said, Ron! And so Ron came down, and we stood in front of that cage, and in that moment, our fates were locked. Um, we just, we knew we couldn't leave this animal here. He was and, amazing looking. Yeah, I mean, I mean he, was, he was so cool. And for me, what I knew was, you know, my career would be over if I took this animal. So um, Chance hopped in our car and he fell asleep on the way home and I thought, oh, this is going to be a piece of cake. He's just like naughty. We got home and we opened the door to our house and he went right over to the couch and he put the fabric in his mouth and he went, <laughs> and he ripped the fabric of our couch and started pulling out all of the stuffing. And then he jumps on top of the, the living room table and stood about like 10 feet in the air and we couldn't get him down. And, you we know, were screaming, like, down, off, stop! And you know, he didn't know any human commands. He was peeing and pooping all over our house. He was growling at us. Um, and we didn't even have a way to tie him up. And then in the middle of the night, poof, he was on top of us and he was gnawing on our heads. And um, first thing in the morning, I went through my purse, found that card from the wolf behaviorist, and got on the phone and said, hi, we're the people who adopted that wolf, and could you come over right away, please? What she was able to do was read his behavior and let us know that what we had was a loving animal. When his hair stands up like this, it means this. And when he chews with the end of his mouth, it means kisses. And, and um, so she was kind of a, a beginning interpreter. Well, everybody thought we were nuts. And of course we were. He destroyed every, every piece of furniture that we had. We had um, two or three couches, our bed. Um, he chewed all of the legs of our tables and our chairs. He broke the windows, all of our, our quilts and our blankets, pillows. He ruined the inside of Ron's car. Um, the outside of the car? <laughs> the outside of Ron's car. I mean, yeah. I'd say, you know, tens of thousands of dollars worth of damage. Uh, the only thing that really mattered was my music. I was very self-centered. There's a certain limitation with, with that. When I, when I decided this is really what's going to happen, and it's going to be a success story, and I'm not going to take him back to the pound, I'm not going to see him die. When I committed myself to that, amazing things started happening. I think that the other thing with, with his relationship with mine has been a battle of wills in a lot of ways. Oh, that's good. When you, when you give of yourself completely, and when you give up the dream that is your most important dream, amazing things happen. What happened was that I started to become a composer for film, a composer for wildlife film. That's what started the whole thing off. And I believe that came directly through um, the experience of living with this animal, the way that I have so intimately and so exclusively. All of a sudden I found myself with, with one film after another, after another, after another, bringing me so much, uh, you know, joy and creativity that it, it was really unequal, you know, in my life before. And um, early on, I mean, we weren't able to travel at all for the first three years that we had chance, um, because we were figuring out all of the details of how to coexist with him ourselves. I mean, he's very different than he would have been if he had grown up with his own kind. The thing that needs to be told about this story is, I don't know of another success story about a wolf and a human. It, you know, we like the idea, you know, bringing the story out because it's, it's, it's a great story for one and for another, it's just would melt a lot of that fear about, about wolves. But we don't want anyone to misunderstand, I mean, we would never have chosen to take a wolf from the wild and try to domesticate it. I mean, that we think is really right. wrong. And that is a certain heartbreak that we live with every single day, that we have this animal that we are asking to live in a world that is not his. If it wasn't for Ron, we couldn't have chance.
landscape were given this life to this animal. And I think Chance knows that. Everything in our life has been choreographed, choreographed around this yes, behavior. Not. No, that's an invitation for self. -serve. This would all be gone yeah. in a matter of self-serve. Self-serve. Yeah. That's what we call it. Hey, come, on, come back here. With that. Come back here with that. And he's, he is like our kid. Um, and every time we'd reach down to pet him, he would pull back from us, and we really yeah. realized that. <clears throat> The only predator that wolves have is humans. We could never touch him and stroke him like this when we first got him. First three, four years. What we have is an interspecies pack. Um, a wolf, a, uh, two humans, a cat and a dog. The communication between him and I. Um, it's <laughs> it's nonverbal, but we know exactly what each other is thinking. I mean, I know him more intimately than I've known any human. It's just on, on another level. It's almost very psychic. And yes, I gave up a life that most people would be would think is is the most amazing life possible. Saving the life of this animal has just given me like you know. Okay incredible amount of um, joy uh, and abundance and happiness and it's just been an, an amazing experience.